In this lesson, we're going to pick up where we left off in the last. We're going to build the rear section of the boiler of the train. So in the left viewport, hit L for left. We're going to create a cylinder primitive. So go to the Create panel, Cylinder, F4 to show your wireframe. And what we want to do is try to get it the same diameter as the existing boiler. So we click, drag it out. When it looks about the same size, you can let go of the button, push a little bit. Now you have a cylinder. With the rotate tool, I'm going to use the gizmo, rotate that cylinder 90 degrees, make sure your angle snaps are on. Let's move that back a little bit. Adjust the height so that it matches the background image, which is about there. Uh, height segments at 1, cap segments at 1, and sides at 18 are good values. So now we will right click that cylinder and convert it to edit poly. Okay, Alt and X so you can see through that mesh. And what we're going to do is go up to the graphite modeling tools and there's a quick slice tool. Click on that button. We're going to come down here and if you click on the mesh you have this line and that's the actual slice. So we want to match the angle that we see in the image, which is roughly there, and then we click again. Now this tool is still active, so what you want to do is go out in the open area and right-click to deactivate it. Now we want to go to the edge sub-object level, come back in, select an edge, Alt-R for a ring selection. You can delete that selection using the delete key on your keyboard. And what you're left with is this floating piece right here. That's the end cap. And that's an element now because it's detached from the mesh. So if you select that and you delete it, let's go to perspective. We now have that section and it's open at this end. So let's hit Alt and Q. And you see that there's still a cap on this side here. So we're going to go to polygon sub object level. Let's select that polygon and delete that as well and now you have a hollow cylinder. So we can exit isolation mode. Let's rotate a little so we can see a little better. And now what we're going to do is go to the vertex sub-object and we're going to select some vertices so we can change the shape of this mesh. So you see on the, the background image there's this line. From here down it squares off this piece a bit. So I'm going to go to left viewport, select those vertices right here and right here and then I'm going to go back to perspective viewport. I'm going to use the R key for scale and at this angle, I think it's a good angle, we can see the outside edge of the boiler. I'm going to start scaling the vertices just to give a different shape. So I like what I see there, it's kind of almost perpendicular to the ground plane. I'm going to get rid of these two sets and now we have all these vertices here left. We're going to scale them out as well. That looks good. It's really just an eye thing. It's not exact science. And then we're in the back here. We're going to scale these out as well. That looks good. And let's deselect the two vertices here and the two over here. And let's just scale this center section so that they're out a little further like that. Okay. And let's hit Alt and X piece is not transparent anymore. And what we're going to do is go to the top of the edit poly. Let's add a turbo smooth. Uh, you, if you click on this rollout and you hit T three times, one, two, three, turbo smooth, and you hit enter, that'll give you an idea what the profile of the piece looks like right now. And that's pretty much what we want. But it, obviously we don't want it to be open like that. We need more detail. So turn off turbo smooth. Let's go to border. Let's select this border, the open uh, section of the rear of the, the model right there. And let's do the same at the front. And then up here in the graphite tools, we have a cap poly button. Let's click that. And that seals off the front and back of that model. Now, if you turn on Turbo Smooth now, you'll see that's a mess. And the reason is because there's no edges between the front and back and there's also one large multi-sided polygon at each end. 
and those won't smooth properly. So what we need to do is go to the edge sub object. Let's select one edge and Alt R to ring select. And then let's use the connect tool. Connect settings. And you see it's set at one, let's make that two. And then right here, as I'm hovering, you can see up in this, this little readout, the different functions we have. Pinch, that's where I am right now, and that's what we want to do. So if we change the pinch value and slide those edges out to somewhere around there, that's going to help retain the mesh's shape when we divide. So we're going to say OK with the check. And now we're going to go to polygon sub-object level. Select two end caps and we're going to inset those. So we're going to roll down, inset settings, and we're set at one. We want the distance that it insets to be approximately the same as this distance between the back and that next edge. So let's just slide that. You can rotate and look at it. It's pretty close, I think a little less. And when you're happy, just hit the check mark for yes. It's okay. Now if you go back to the top, turn on Turbo Smooth, you'll see that that's crisp, looks pretty good. Let's raise the iterations of the Turbo Smooth over here to 2. And that has the general volume that we want out of that model. With that said, we're going to pause the lesson and pick this up in the next video.